thank you for subscribing to my channel dun sa akin 34 subscribers as I made this presentation thank you so much and for those who did not subscribe yet please be generous to click the subscribe button same with the bell for the notification and if this is your first time to attend welcome to Dr. Krell's online class and our topic is pulmonary embolism okay and what will be in here it's definition risk factors causes clinical manifestations uh, diagnostic procedures, medical and surgical management, and nursing discharge plan. Okay? So, by the way, the contents of this discussion were taken from different MS nursing textbooks, and some photos are personally mine, but few were from websites. And I don't have the intention to claim it, and I don't own the rights. Moreover, thanks to Dr. Evelyn for your contribution in this content. Be safe, always. <laughs> If you find it informative, do like, share, and subscribe to my channel later. Okay, so let's start na tayo. So here, pulmonary embolism. Okay? Okay, so this pulmonary embolism is a blood clot that occurs in the lungs. See this one? Okay? Yan, mga blood clots yan. And there, there is a blockage in one of the pulmonary arteries in the lungs. In most cases, this... Uh, pulmonary embolism is caused by blood clots that travels to the lungs from deep veins in the legs. Okay? So, from here, it's going up to the lungs. And rarely, from veins in the other parts of the body. Yung tinatawag natin uh, deep vein thrombosis. Okay? So, it can damage some part of the lung due to restricted blood flow, decrease oxygen level in the blood, and affect other organs as well. So, large or uh, multiple blood clots can be fatal. Okay? The blockage can be life-threatening. According to some authors, it results in death okay? of one-third of people who go undiagnosed or untreated. Diba? Okay? And actually, a blood clot that travels so other part of the body is called embolus. Right? And so, and a question. So, what causes a pulmonary embolism? So, one is injury or damage. So, this injury or damage, injuries like bone fractures, right? Uh, muscle tears, this one. Uh, can cause damage to blood vessels that leads to clots. Inactivity. During long periods of inactivity, gravity causes blood to stagnate in the lowest area of the body, which may lead to blood clots. So this could occur if you are sitting for a lengthy trip or working mostly in a sitting position. Or if you are lying in bed recovering from an illness. Okay? So, blood clots that most uh, often cause pulmonary embolism begins in the legs or pelvis. Right? Some health conditions also can cause blood clots. Okay? It can cause really too easily. Okay? So, which can lead to pulmonary embolism. So, treatment for medical conditions such as surgery or chemotherapy for cancer can also cause blood clots okay so with this there are risk factors okay like what cancers a family history of embolism fractures of the leg or hip hypercoagulable state or genetic blood clotting disorders history of heart attack or stroke major surgery obesity <clears throat> A sedentary lifestyle, age over 60, taking estrogen and testosterone. Okay? So, okay, we're done with the risk factors. Next is the signs and symptoms. So, these pulmonary embolism symptoms may vary depending on how much the lungs is involved. Okay? Like what? Like the size. Okay? The size of the clots. And whether you have underlying lung and heart disease. Okay? And most common symptoms is shortness of breath. Right? They may be gradual, pa-gradual, gradual, or sudden. Right? 
and trouble catching the breath happens even with resting and gets worse with physical activity okay and other symptoms including anxiety right clammy or bluish skin okay clammy or discolored skin cold what cyanosis right okay next is chest pain chest pain that may extend to the where to the arms okay to the jaw what else where <laughs> to the neck and shoulder okay Ayan. so this pain may feel like according to the book the feeling is like having a heart attack right so the the pain is of then sharp and the pain can stop a person from being able to take a deep breath okay and there is this pain also when a person uh, cough or bend or lean over okay Sion. next is fainting so you may pass out or a person may pass out if the heart rate or blood pressure drops suddenly. Okay? So this is called what? Syncope. Syncope. Is it syncope? The next, a regular rapid heartbeat. Okay? A regular or rapid heartbeat. Okay? What else? Lightheadedness. Okay? Lightheadedness or we can include here dizziness can be okay dizziness okay then what else rapid breathing restlessness cough or spitting up blood okay so a cough that may include blood or may include bloody or blood streak mucus okay then weak pulse exists sweating fever leg pain or swelling okay for the diagnostic procedures uh, actually in some cases a pulmonary embolism can be difficult to diagnose so this is especially true if the patient have an underlying lung or heart condition so when a patient visits a doctor for the symptoms they have they'll ask about the overall health and any pre-existing uh, conditions that they may have okay so the doctor will typically perform one or more of the following tests to discover the cause one is x-ray or chest x-ray so this is a standard uh, and non-invasive test that allows doctor to see the heart and lungs in details okay as well as any problems with the bones around the lungs okay the next is ecg Okay, ECG or electrocardiography, this test measures the heart electrical activity. Okay, and what else? MRI, an invasive uh, procedure that is often used for uh, disease detection, diagnosis, and treatment monitoring. Okay, this MRI. Then, CT scan. So, how about the CT scan? So, this can gives a doctor the ability to see cross-sectional images of the lungs of the patient, right? So, a procedure that uses a computer link to an x-ray machine to make a series of detailed picture or areas inside the body, okay? And what do you think is the main difference between these two imaging techniques, okay? The MRI uses strong magnetic field to take images while CT scan uses x-ray okay a pulmonary angiography this test involves making a small incision in the vein and uh, the doctor will inject a, sp a special dye so that the blood vessels of the lung can be seen okay that is for the pulmonary angiography and for the duplex venous ultrasound, this test uses radio, uh, radio waves to visualize the flow of blood and to check the blood clots in the legs. Okay? 
in venography. So this is a specialist x-ray of the veins of the legs. Okay. The dimer test, this type of blood test, are used to check for blood clotting problems. Okay. So ayan. If there are some diagnostic procedures that I did not include, please write it in the um, comment section. Okay. So, let's go to the next. So, how a pulmonary embolism treated? So, treatment for a pulmonary embolism depends on the size and location of the blood clots, right? And if the problem is minor and caught um, early, so the doctor may recommend medications as treatment. Some drugs can break up small blood clots or small clots, okay? So, one is anticoagulant. Okay, and this is also called a what? A blood thinners. Okay. And what else? Um, for this anticoagulant, the drug, what drugs you think? Uh, heparin. Okay. Heparin and warfarin. Warfarin. Warfarin kayo. Oh, I'm friends na kayo. Joke lang. <laughs> so, this heparin and warfarin prevents new clots from forming in the blood. Okay? So, they can save a life in an emergency situation. Okay? And next is blood dissolvers. Blood dissolvers or yung mga thrombolytics natin. Dito yun. Okay? So, these drugs speed up the breakdown of a clot, okay? They are typically reserved for emergency situations because side effects may include dangerous bleeding problems. Surgery may be necessary to remove problematic clots, especially those that restrict blood flow to the lungs or heart. So, some surgical procedures may use in the case of pulmonary embolisms that includes... One is the vein filter. There will be a small incision. Okay. Then use a thin wire to install a small filter in the inferior vena cava. The vena cava is the main vein that leads from the legs to the right side of the heart. So the filter prevents blood clots from traveling from the legs to the lungs. Okay. Next is clot removal so for this clot removal there is a thin tube called the catheter will suction large clots out of the artery okay ayan then next last is the open surgery so the doctor use open surgery only and emergency situations so when a person is in shock or medications aren't working well to break up the clots, saka lang open surgery ay gagawin. Okay? So, yan. For the nursing discharge plan, to encourage the patient to start taking prescribed medication with the right dosage, time, and frequency, right? So, anticoagulant medication such as what? What was the doctor ordered? It's the heparin. Okay? And, ano nga yung isa? Warfarin. This medications prevents blood clots from returning. Okay? So once prescribed, instruct the patient how to use compression stockings. Okay? Or there are another device to prevent uh, clots from forming in the legs. Okay? And regular exercising the legs. So regular exercising the legs is also a key component of therapy after a pulmonary embolism okay so if you have additional information to be included in the discharge plan please write it in the comment section for the benefit of everybody oh i think we're done so we'll start with the review questions yeah so you may read the questions then answer so if the time is not enough you may pause first then rationality will be every after the question if Sounds doesn't fit to your ears. Pwede po click na lang ng volume. Okay? And if you want to read it by yourself, pwede pa-close na. Close bang tawag doon? <laughs> pa-reduce ng volume para kayo na din ang magbasa. Okay? 
So a nurse is caring for a 79-year-old man who has returned to the post-surgical unit following abdominal surgery. So the patient is unable to ambulate and is now refusing to wear an external pneumatic compression stocking. So the nurse should explain that refusing to wear external pneumatic compression stockings increases his risk of what surgical or what post-surgical complication. Okay, A. Sepsis. B. Infection, C. Pulmonary embolism, D. Hematoma. Time starts now. Three, two, one, stop. Okay, our answer should be pulmonary embolism. Okay. The patient who have surgery that limits mobility are at increased risk for pulmonary embolism, secondary to uh, DVT, okay, the deep vein thrombosis. So, the use of an external pneumatic compression stocking significantly reduces the risk by increasing venous return to the heart and limiting blood stasis, okay. The risk for uh, or the risk of infection or sepsis would not be affected by an external pneumatic compression stocking. A hematoma or bruise would not be affected by the external pneumatic compression stocking unless the stockings were placed directly over the hematoma. Okay? So, yeah, next question. A patient is being treated for a pulmonary embolism and the medical nurse is aware that the patient suffered an acute disturbance in pulmonary perfusion. So, this involves an alterations in what aspect of normal physiology? A. Uh, maintenance of constant osmotic pressure in the alveoli b maintenance of muscle tone in the diaphragm c ph balance in the pulmonary veins and arteries d adequate blood flow through the pulmonary circulation okay time starts now Okay, three, two, one. Okay, what is your answer? It should be D, okay? So, adequate flow of blood through the pulmonary circulation. It's because pulmonary perfusion is the actual blood flow through the pulmonary circulation. So, perfusion is not defined in terms of pH balance, muscle tone, or osmotic pressure. Okay, next question. The nurse is providing discharge uh, teaching for a patient to develop a pulmonary embolism after total knee surgery. So the patient has been converted from heparin to sodium warfarin or dacomadine, anticoagulant therapy. What should the nurse teach the client? A. Comadine will uh, continue to break up the clots over a period of weeks. Okay, B. Comadine must be taken concurrent with ASA or the acetyl salicylic acid to achieve anticoagulant 
C. Anticoagulant therapy usually lasts between 3 and 6 months. And D. He should take the medication supplement containing Vita K. Okay, start. Three, two, one. Okay, what is the answer? It's C. Okay, anticoagulant therapy prevents further clot formation, but cannot be used to dissolve a clot. So the therapy continues for approximately three to six months, and is not combined with ASA. And Vitake reverses the effect of anticoagulant therapy and normally should not be taken. Okay, so next question. A cardiovascular patient with a previous history of pulmonary embolism is experiencing a sudden onset of dyspnea, rapid breathing, and chest pain. So the nurse recognizes the characteristics, sign, and symptoms of a pulmonary embolism. So what is the nurse's best action? Okay, we are looking for the best action okay a rapidly assess the patient's cardiopulmonary status arrange for an ecg increase the height of the patient's bed and d manage the patient's anxiety Okay, so the answer is A. Rapidly assess the patient's cardiopulmonary status. Okay, so in here, the patient management and the event of a uh, pulmonary embolism begins with cardiopulmonary assessment and intervention. So this is a priority over ECG monitoring, management of anxiety, or repositioning of the patient. So even though each of these actions may be appropriate and necessary, but we are looking for the best action. Okay, next question. A post-surgical patient is illuminated her call light to inform the nurse of a sudden onset of a lower leg pain. So on inspection, the nurse observes that the patient's left leg is visibly swollen and ridden. So what is the nurse's most appropriate action? A. Administer a PRN dose of subcutaneous heparin. B. Inform the physician that the patient has signs and symptoms of VTE or the venous thromboembolism. C. Mobilize the patient promptly to dislodge any thrombi in the patient's lower leg. D. Massage the patient's lower leg to temporarily restore venous return.
Okay, the answer is B. Inform the physician that the patient has signs and symptoms of VTE. So, this is a venous thromboembolism, okay? And by the way, class, this is a term referring to a blood clot in the veins. And mostly, it is underdiagnosed and serious, yet preventable medical condition that can cause disability and death, okay? So, VTE requires prompt medical follow-up. Uh, heparin will not dissolve an established clot and massaging the patient's leg and mobilizing the patient would be contraindicated because they would dislodge the clot okay possibly resulting in pulmonary embolism okay next question Okay, a patient with a pulmonary embolism is being treated with a heparin infusion. So, what diagnostic findings suggest to the nurse that treatment is effective? A. The patient's PT or the prothrombin time is within reference ranges. B. Arterial blood sampling test positive for the presence of factor 13. C. The patient's platelet level is below 100,000 cubic milliliter. D. The patient's activated partial thromboplastin time is 1.5 to 2.5 times the control value. 60 seconds starts now. Okay, four, three, two, one. Okay, so what is your answer? It is D. So the patient's activated partial thromboplastin time is 1.5 to 2.5 times the control value. Okay, so the therapeutic effect of heparin is monitored by serial measurement of the partial thromboplastin time. Okay, and the dosage is adjusted to maintain the range at 1.5 to 2.5 times the laboratory control. So, heparin dosing is not determined on the basis of platelet levels and the presence or absence of clotting factors or PT levels. So, yon. So, yung answer natin is D. Okay, so this is the last question we have and... Thank you for watching. Ayan, nilagyan ko lang siya ng picture. Mataba talaga ako. <laughs> okay lang. Ayan na nga, we are done. So, thank you for listening to the discussion and answering the question. Ilan ang scores nyo? I hope you learned something. At sabi ko pa nga, be informed, be knowledgeable. So, bye-bye for now. Next time naman tayo ulit. So, be safe, class. God bless us all. Don't forget to like, subscribe na din kung hindi pa. And share.